Hey folks, I'm Gene Della Sala with Audioholics. We are at the first annual Sound United event with Dave Naber, the product brand director for Class A. How are you doing, David? Doing great, Gene. Awesome. You know, guys, I really like this brand. Um, they kind of disappeared for a while when they got acquired, and I kind of they were off my radar at least. Um, one of the best amplifiers I measured to date was the CT2300. That was just textbook incredibly good linear ab design you know the ic tunnel thing that you guys did was pretty in inventive um that amplifier never i can never cook an egg on it and i think it put out 300 watts a channel and it was conservatively rated amplifier measured you know incredibly well very low noise floor great distortion specs great sound and i put it up against amplifiers that cost even more and i was just could not believe how good this amplifier was always dreaming of the day to actually check out the monoblocks, which basically bridges two of those modules together to give you double the power, half the distortion kind of thing. But now we're here and we're looking at a whole kind of facelift for the brand, kind of some new designs. You threw on some nice power meters here. I love power meters. You don't see that too often these days. So I want to turn this over to David because I want to hear what's going on with Class A, what kind of direction the company is going what kind of new products are coming out and what's the difference between these amplifiers versus the old CT2300 that I reviewed God, about six years ago or so. So Dave, okay. please uh, take the mic and give us a show. All right, well, there's a lot to talk about there. So yes, a year ago, just over a year ago, we were acquired by Sound United. Uh, Sound United is known for uh, quite a number of other very popular consumer audio brands, including Denon, Marantz, Definitive Technology, Polk, uh, Heos, Boston Acoustics. So uh, it was a great place for us to land because there were technologies available, our technologies available to us, and uh, there's a place to build the product. It's unlike anything we've ever had before. So we will be building new models in a Shirakawa Audio Works facility, Shirakawa, Japan, which is where the top of the Denon and the Marantz products are made. And uh, there's just no question these will be the very best products that we've ever produced. So I'm very excited about that. Uh, we've got new models. You mentioned the CT2300. Uh, it introduced this IC tunnel concept. We weren't the first people to put a fan on an amplifier, of course, but we were the first to combine an aluminum bonded fin heat sink with a thermostatically controlled fan. And the whole idea was that we were trying to solve a problem, which is that there were people that wanted very high-end amplifiers to go into home theater systems, which required that they fit into equipment racks. And when you try to go into an equipment rack with a conventional amp, it just doesn't want to be there. You have to devise some sort of a external cooling scheme, and nobody's happy with it. It takes a lot of space. It's expensive. Um, and uh, uh, the CT2300 and the others of its generation solve that problem with this thing that we call the intelligent cooling tunnel. The, um, the benefit, of course, is that not only do you have a way to put the amplifier into an equipment rack, and actually you can stack them one atop the next without any spaces between, so it's very efficient for cooling. But uh, another benefit is that we gained performance and reliability advantages by actively maintaining the operating temperature. So we've applied that principle in the new designs. We've got a Delta Mono and a Delta Stereo coming out later this year. They have new versions of the IC tunnel. These are amps that have uh, quite a bit of Class A power, and Class A has a fair amount of uh, waste heat. So these generate more heat than the old designs, which means we have to remove more heat. So that was the, the reason for developing a, a, a new solution, a new tunnel. And uh, so new heat sink, new fan, and uh, an excellent, excellent performance, I think. The electronic design is also completely new. So virtually nothing from the earlier generation, which is an excellent uh, solution for its time, exists in this new generation. The way I think of it is that we're trying to climb this mountain toward perfect sound, and designers choose different sides of the mountain to climb. So you get sometimes amplifiers that sound different, but you might describe them as equally far away from the top. And we're still climbing along a similar face of the mountain, but we've achieved, I think, a much higher uh, level with these new designs. Now, they are more expensive, so it, it is a bit of a case of you get what you pay for. But um, 
for example, they have twice as much energy storage as the previous designs. Um, they're designed to have a, um, a THD plus noise performance that's flat across the entire audio band and to preserve that no matter what impedance we're driving, no matter what output power. It's very difficult to achieve it, but when you do, you really hear the sound, and uh, I think these are the best sounding amps we've ever made. And that's the challenge, guys. When you do, um, when you do amplifier design, especially with Class D amplifier design, it's not that you can't get a Class D amp to sound good with a specific 8 ohm or a 4 ohm load. It's the fact that you can't always get those kind of designs to sound consistent no matter what kind of speaker load that they drive. That's one of the advantages that, that linear ABs still have is that they sound extremely similar no matter what, a good AB I should say, sounds extremely good no matter what kind of speaker load it's presented to. Now, the question I have for you on this is you said that these have a pretty high class A bias. I you think you said well, 35 like watts. 35 watts. Is that higher than the first generation, the one that I measured? Oh yeah, the one that you measured would have been down around one watt. So uh, right. quite, quite a, a, by comparison, quite a low um, bias. Class A, the advantage to Class A is that the transistors are always conducting. There's no crossover distortion. It's really theor theoretical perfection in amplifier power, but you typically only get 25, maybe 30% efficiency. So obviously you're doing the hell of a lot of heat sinking and that IC tunneling. And you're right, if you keep the product, if you keep the internals cool, those products will last a long time. And they also perform more linearly when they're cool as well. So there's a lot of advantages to keeping your amplifier cool. I'm not a big fan of amplifiers that you could cook an egg on top of <laughs> when they're sitting there idling, because you're just wasting a lot of power. Right. Well, and that's one of the reasons why you wouldn't try to make a class A amplifier that, that delivered all the power you might need. So you, if you tried to build a two or 300 watt class A, a true class A amplifier, it'd be the size of a ref refrigerator. Uh, it would be not only wasteful, but there, there comes a point where the devices have to be so far apart because of the heat that you can't get power to them efficiently. So it's, it starts to defeat the, yeah, itself. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, uh, so this is what all engineering exercises are. Our, um, engineering projects are exercises in compromise and trying to balance trade-offs. And I think this is, uh, this is really a superb combination of just the right amount of Class A power, just the right amount of overall all power, the right amount of ability to drive low impedance loads and so on. It's really a, a good design. Right. Well, the other question I have for you, we were downstairs in the Denon, Marantz, Polk, definitive room. A lot, a lot of brands these days with Sound United. And there was a Class A um, display there, and I saw a processor, but it wasn't a multi-channel processor. It was a two-channel processor. What's the model on that? What's, what's going on with that thing? Does it have digital inputs? Does it have parametric EQ? Does it have all the good bells and whistles that we'd like to have in a modern preamp? I'd like you to give me kind of a rundown of that product. Sure. So there is a, a, a it's a stereo preamp. Uh, you could call it a preamp processor. It's called the Delta Pre, P-R-E. Uh, it has both analog and digital inputs. The analog side is um, uh, fully balanced. It has a built-in phono stage. The phono stage can have uh, up to two turntables or tone arms connected to it, uh, one balanced, one single-ended. Um, you can adjust the gain and loading of the phono stage by the touch screen. The, uh, Does it support moving magnet and moving coil? Yes. Uh, in fact, it's got both uh, low output and high output moving coil, so it's a quite a flexible wow. design. Yeah. Uh, very good sounding phono stage. It has digital inputs of virtually every flavor, uh, including optional HDMI. So if you have a TV between your speakers and uh, don't want to do a full surround system, you just do a two-channel system with this, and uh, you can com have convenient switching and good performance if you run HDMI through this, this preamp. What do you mean optional HDMI? Is that a module you add It's on? a module you add. It's a $500 option. Gotcha. Um, the, uh, the other inputs, digital inputs, include Ethernet, USB, um, coax, optical, AES, EBU. So it's a full, full uh, suite of uh, inputs. There's digital processing available. Three very important features. You mentioned parametric EQ. There are um, two features devoted to give, giving, getting you the best possible bass performance. So uh, when you put speakers in a room, um, they start sending signals around. Those signals are bouncing around the room and 
sometimes adding together and making peaks and other times canceling each other making dips and uh, and so wherever you get peaks in the low frequency performance the uh, parametric EQ can be used to draw those peaks down um, it's a five band parametric EQ per channel so uh, it's flexible the second thing that can happen is if the uh, signals happen to be canceling each other at a certain frequency then you can use a subwoofer which is generating bass from a different physical location in the room and it it can be used to fill in that spot where you have the dip so it's the same principles that you apply in home theater mm -hmm. it's just it's physics and it's audio and it applies in two channel just as equally as it does in, in home theater so there's bass management very flexible slope um, uh, adjustments uh, frequency adjustments and so on the third feature is a tone control. So tone controls have been missing from high-end preamps since probably the 70s. Uh, as soon as people started to realize that when you put extra circuitry in the signal path, you were adding noise and distortion, audiophiles like, like you and me, we, we said, I'd rather do without the tone control than have that extra noise and distortion without, you know, we don't want to lose any signal. But now, uh, when we do things in the digital domain, it's possible to do some processing without adding any noise or distortion. There's no compromise associated. So from one recording to the next, you find that maybe one's a little bit, let's say it's a little bit of a bright recording, you can just soften it a bit. Just a half a dB or one dB sometimes is enough to make all the difference because the adjustment can occur over a very uh, large part of the audio band. So it's, it's quite audible. So anyway, I find that with the tone control, uh, the way it ships, by the way, is uh, what we call a tilt control, where you tilt the tonal balance either toward the highs or toward the lows. And with that engaged, I find I'm listening to more of my recordings just because they, I can make them sound better with a very small, very easy-to-use adjustment. There's an app for the preamp that lets you do it from your tablet or from your phone iOS or Android device doesn't matter so it's I don't very know, flexible. I don't know of many two channel preamps that are app controlled. That's pretty cool. I didn't realize. Yeah, the that. whole uh, the whole thing. It's basically like a it's got the facilities you might say of a surround processor, but it's it's dedicated to high performance two channel. It also has two auxiliary outputs and they can be used as left and right channels so that you have two lefts and two rights for power by amping if your speaker allows that. Um, or you can take one of those auxiliary outs and create a second subwoofer, so you can have stereo subwoofers as well. Oh, okay. Or now, two mono subs. Is there a home theater bypass mode if you want to interface this yes, there with is. the processor? Yes, there is. So you can put a, there's a pass-through mode that locks the volume at 0, 0.0. That's also helpful if you have a, a product like a, let's say you have a Sonos system that you send music throughout your house. You don't want two volume controls in the system, so you run that in the digital domain it works. So you run digital into the preamp, it locks the volume control, and now your Sonos is the only volume control in the system. So it's, uh, it's flexible in that way. And it also has a bypass mode for analog sources. If you want to turn all the digital switching, all the digital clocks off, you just dedicate an analog, any analog source you want as a bypass source. And uh, uh, it acts then as a, a, a a conventional pure analog preamp. So that will bypass the base management and the parametric EQ yes, and all exactly, that stuff. Yes, exactly, exactly. Right. Well, that's cool. Why don't you give us a little rundown of the setup we listened to today? I saw this uh, yeah. funny wheel thing spinning <laughs> over here. Well, so we we, uh, we wanted to be able to show the, the extremes of this preamp, how good it can be both uh, with analog sources and digital sources. So uh, I have a MacBook Pro as my digital source. It's connected USB. I'm using Audiovana uh, Plus in iTunes integrated mode for my uh, digital front end. And on the analog side, I brought my Tascam 42NB open reel tape machine. Uh, it's really, in a way, it's kind of ultimate analog. Um, it, it also avoids the need to have to set up a turntable at a temporary venue. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> so it's uh, simpler and uh, uh, people love it. It looks cool and it sounds great and uh, it's just a lot of fun so we uh, we brought that along uh, both are connected of course to the delta pre from there we go to the delta monos which are the 300 watt mono amps and from there to uh, magico s5 mark ii speakers which i think are terrific uh, we're using a, a, a dr acoustics antigon filter for, uh, with the amplifiers it, it's it's above my pay grade to say exactly how it works, but it uh, uses quartz and carbon fiber tubes and uh, 
sounds great, doesn't limit the current to the amplifier, so we're big fans of the DR acoustics. And um, yeah, so that's it, audio quest cabling throughout, and um, I'm happy with the sound. I hope you liked it too. I did like it. I was really, um, I love listening to uh, Reel to Reel. I mean, I haven't heard one of those in a long time. And um, we listened to Steely Dan, but there was the second demo that you did. I forgot what what source was, uh, what, what the what the music was uh, on that. It was a Peter Erskine drum solo. That was really amazing. Yeah, I, that yeah. was from... Uh, 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 analogy records yeah that that to me out of all the demos you played in this room that was the most impressive to me it, it got you to hear the dynamics of the speakers and and the amplification and just how good a good analog source can still sound so it's important to take analog seriously if you really want to have good sound well Dave this is great stuff it looks amazing I mean this is the best looking class a electronics I've seen it makes me kind of want to like <laughs> steal one of these if I could lift it. I don't know how much does that monoblock it's weigh. It's just over 100 pounds. Yeah, it looks like it's pretty heavy, guys. So maybe someone can help me with that if you don't mind. Well, I really enjoyed this demo, Dave. Thanks for having me here. And thanks for showing me all this great new products from Class A. I hope to be checking out some of this stuff soon, getting it on our test bench just to see how far you guys have gone since the last time I looked at one of your products. And my friends, um, I hope you like this video. Please thumb it up. Give us some comments down below if you're a Class A owner. What's your favorite Class A product? If you're thinking about getting some, I definitely recommend it, especially these amplifiers are awesome. And my friends, until next time, keep listening. And we're looking at all these great new products for Denon. We've got Jake Mendel, who's the brand director for Denon. Jake, how you doing? Doing well, how are you doing? I'm doing awesome. I'm a little bit overwhelmed with all the products that we're seeing here, so I'm gonna ask Jake to talk about how Denon is getting back into two-channel, because Denon's heritage, before all this multi-channel stuff came out, was strictly two-channel. You guys took two-channel seriously. I'm glad to see that there's kind of a resurgence in two-channel coming, and we're starting to see some of those classic Denon products coming back, only with new facelifts, being able to handle all the latest streaming technologies and all the latest uh, digital and analog. So I would like to talk, um, have Jake basically turn this over to Jake and have him give us a rundown of all the new Denon two-channel products. So here you go, Jake. Thank you so much. Yeah, um, first off, thank you for coming. It's a fantastic event. We're glad to have you guys all come out. Um, Denon is definitely coming very heavily back into the two-channel, the hi-fi, trying to bring that culture and that lifestyle to uh, be it your entry-level consumer all the way up to the very premium audio uh, files. It's been very exciting and a pretty long road for engineers and brand team and everything, but we um, are bringing some really great quality stuff. Um, most, uh, almost all of it has HEOS built in, so that platform as well helps with streaming if you're deciding not to go down that route. Still being able to perform uh, two-channel and get those speakers just going exactly how you want them. So how many two-channel products are you looking at in terms of amplifiers or integrated amplifiers, SACD players? What's what's kind of the range there, price points, if you, uh, if you will? Yeah, uh, currently for this year, we're going to be looking at roughly about five to six, everything ranging from 300 to 1,500. So, um, yeah, we have everything from entry level, getting people started, getting them hooked on this stuff, to um, letting them perfect every little crook, nook and cranny of this and make it perfect sound exactly how they need it to. So what are we looking at right here? What are these products? What are the prices? Yeah, so currently we're looking at the PMA 1600NE, which is our Denon amplifier, and the DCD 1600NE. Um, so currently this is our su um, SACD player for the uh, DCD 1600NE and our integrated amplifier. Um, this is pushing out about 140 watts per channel for the two channels. Connects in with the uh, SACD player is using advanced AL32 um, processing plus, uh, which is a uh, Denon proprietary uh, technology, making those sounds even better and crisper and exactly how they should be, and they were meant to be recorded. Um, so that's currently what we're looking at, and it would also come with the DNP800NE, which is a network player, and that puts the whole trip play on uh, these great products. So how do we integrate HEOS into this, or is this already with the network player, HEOS it will be um, integrated into that, being able to stream via Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, all of that, and you'll be able to listen to all of your favorite uh, radio stations, or um, it could be radio station or Spotify, Pandora, Tidal, anything like that. Uh, and with that capability, you can enjoy any song at your fingertips. Okay, now this integrated amp, it's not just an analog amp, it actually has digital inputs on it too, yes. right? Yes, yes. And does that support high res as well? Yes.
So this is all high res certified and only only being the best product is, is a fantastic piece, a, a fantastic family of product. Okay. So now you got these integrated products. What about two channel receivers? Are you doing that as well? Um, yeah, we have some in the pipeworks for two channel receivers and we're uh, pushing those out as well, um, kind of getting back into our heritage. Den has been around for 110 years and uh, we're going to keep pursuing these. It's fantastic. It's so what about, what about uh, for you analog lovers, what about turntables? Yeah, so we just launched a white version of our DP450 USB. You can take these turntables and they have an actual USB connector into them. You can pull from that a MP3 file from your favorite vinyls or a um, WAV file as well. So you can support and have your favorite songs. It, have it digital, have it on a turntable, anything. With a built-in phono input as well, so that makes it even easier for you. Awesome. And these connect in with all of our other systems as well. So it, it's so cohesive and so friendly and everything is just amazing. Great. Well, guys, I um, I like what I'm seeing here with this with these new Denon two channel uh, products, and the fact that you could do the latest with HEOS, you could do the network player, get your MQA with Tidal, all that stuff. I mean, it's like you have every kind of source covered with these products. You've got the updated cosmetics, and you and you have the heritage Denon sound that people have grown to love for, like you said, a hundred years. So we're looking forward to checking out these products more closely, uh, maybe doing a formal review, getting this one on the bench and see if it really puts out the 140 watts of channel that it says. It looks like it would. I know that Den and Two Channel products have always been very solidly and conservatively rated. So with that said, my friends, we are glad that you're here and keep listening. We have Emmanuel Milot. Did I say it right? I hope I didn't butcher it. Awesome. And I'm going to have Emmanuel basically talk about what's new with Marantz. I guess we're going to be focusing on some of these slimline products. He could kind of define what that category of product is. You guys were the first that came out with these slimline receivers, and now I see other brands are starting to follow you guys. So maybe you could talk about why you have slimline products when you have all these massive receivers as well. What's the purpose of slimline, and what's new about these products as opposed to the last generation? Okay, no problem. All right. So welcome. So yes, we're showing off here for and unveiling today actually at NADC here the new uh, Slimline AVR range from Marantz. So actually we came with the idea and you're absolutely right, we were the first brand to introduce Slimline AVR looking at the category and realizing the fact that there was more and more people sometimes were afraid of looking at an AVR because there's those big massive boxes and they may not have all that space to dedicate to an AVR in their living room and they were looking for a more I would say low profile solution. So we had that ID uh, and I believe that is almost almost 10 years ago of coming with a more I would say slim elegant design AVR that would fulfill all of the function of a normal AVR offering a little bit less power but offering all of the connectivity you may want and it turned out today that with the evolution of the market and the introduction of the soundbar category that a slimline AVR can actually be an amazing alternative to a soundbar solution so um, you may find a soundbar very convenient but if you want to connect more source to your AVR or if you want to have more flexibility around the speaker and really enjoy a full complete surround sound an AVR remains the best solution today in the market and by offering a slim line profile you have something which is far less intrusive in your living room so they're a little bit more I would say elegant and easier to uh, in integrate into your living room and uh, doesn't mean that because they're a slimline profile that they don't have all of the technology you expect from an AVR the main compromise is on, I would say, the output power of those AVR. So we actually have a five channel configuration and a seven channel configuration, and they both offer 50 watt of power under eight ohm per channel. Uh, and they all have uh, the uh, HDMI input, uh, HDMI output. So the five channel will have ARC because we don't need to support uh, more than five channel. And the seven channel will even have ERC that will allow you also to transfer directly from your television to the AVR Dolby Atmos information as we know that more and more people are streaming from the app in their television. So this year for those new AVR, we are actually adding a, a couple of new features. So the first comment I want to make is people may probably used to the NR1608 or 1609 and we're actually going to NR17010. The only reason for that is we just wanted to simplify the name. So an NR1510 will be the five channel uh, receiver and an NR1710 will be the seven channel uh, receiver. So it's far more easier that to makes understand. It a lot easier to remember for sure. Exactly. Yeah. 
So then after what we had as a new feature this year and that so for the seven channel one, we had uh, Dolby height virtualization. So if you don't have the ability of installing elevation speaker or uh, high level or Atmos speaker, you can still virtualize, uh, I would say, the elevation speaker with that system. And that's through DTS-X, right? Yes, correct. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, also through Dolby. This one is oh, sorry, Dolby, it's Dolby well. High Virtualization. Oh, okay. So you had Do uh, DTS Virtual X that we were already uh, onboarding on those machines, and now we're adding Dolby High Virtualization, which is the Dolby solution, I would say, for uh, virtualizing elevation speaker. Gotcha. So what we're heading also uh, this year to those uh, AVR, it's uh, what we call the HDMI auto input rename. So if you're basically connecting a source player directly to your AVR, it will automatically read the name information of the product. So let's take the example of an Apple TV, for example. So by plugging the Apple TV in your AVR, the source input will automatically be renamed to Apple TV. So you don't have to do that manually any longer. You can, of course, rename it in a different name uh, if you want to. Now, or is you that can a feature that's available? Available on the regular Marantz AV receivers, or is that unique no, to this? No, that's unique to uh, those one and the new model for this year. I would say this is something we're adding uh, to those new model this year. What we're adding also as well, it's the ability to do a zone two or EOS rebroadcasting from the main zone. So if you're watching television in your main living room and the game is on, or you can have an EOS speaker, or you can have another Marantz EOS compatible product and actually broadcast cast the sound of the television uh, to that room too wirelessly. Uh, so we were able to do that in a, before in the past, but you had to run another cable. So now we did get rid of the request to uh, wire that cable and it's done directly through HDMI. So it's a much simpler configuration uh, for the end user. What if you wanted to broadcast it to a pair of headphones? So this is actually uh, something we're looking into. So, and we believe we'll have good news uh, for the consumer by the end of this year in being able to actually rebroadcast to a Bluetooth uh, pair of headphones uh, directly out of this area from the range of this year. Uh, and that will come as a software update. So we don't have the exact release date at the moment, but the product is ready for that. We just have to deliver the software for it. That's pretty awesome. That's that's really handy for people. If you're running a, like a 5.1 system and you have your parents or someone come over that are more hard of hearing, uh, you could literally in the future be able to take a pair of those Bluetooth headphones like he's talking about, put them, sync them up here to the receiver, and then they can hear the same program material that you're listening to. You don't have to crank the volume all the way up. So if you have people that are hard of hearing, they'll be able to hear it better with the headphones. That's awesome. That's a great. Yes, and great we feature. actually also uh, one of the a few brands that will offer the ability to either just broadcast to the headphone and shut off the sound of the speaker or do both at the same time for exactly the use case you were describing right now. So that will, that will be by before the end of this year we will release the software for that on those new models. And uh, last thing we're adding also, and I know this is a kind of a little bit more specific for some people, for some installation, but that was a big request from, uh, for us and for some, a lot of people. It's the ability actually to watch a video uh, source and at the same time have different audio source playing in the back. So you, it allows you to be able to play, I would say, a game and at the same time listen to the radio or listen to different music. So we're adding also that this year to uh, the, the new range of AVR. Nice. Well, great. It sounds, it sounds like they've got some good features built into these slimline receivers, guys. And if you're contemplating you know, getting a simple sound bar, this might be your this might be your key right here. You you match this up with some you know small 5.1 system, and you got you pretty much have a soundbar killer. If you're more featured on hi-fi and music, and you want the convenience of being able to do all your streaming, have more connectivity, more inputs, and stuff like that. So this is pretty cool. Can you tell me what are the prices of these two models? Yes. Yeah, so the five channel um, will retail for 5.99, and the seven channel will retail for 7.49. It's pretty affordable. Well, these look like great feature pro uh, feature laden products. We've covered some of the Slimline products in the past, and they've been very good performers. And this looks like it's just car carrying that heritage with the Marantz name. And I appreciate once again you giving us the rundown of these products. I'm looking forward to seeing what else is coming down the pipe on some of the um, the bigger models. I know we can't talk about that now, but it is that's my bias. I like the big receivers. I like you know all of the bells and whistles. And, um, you know, we just reviewed the SR8012. I love that receiver. 
and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how Marantz takes it to the next generation when that's ready. Well, my friends, this is Gene Della Sala, and we are here again with Emmanuel Milot, and we appreciate all this information. We enjoyed this Sound United event, and until next time, keep listening. <laughs>